Hello, welcome back to a chapter a day. Happy Sunday. Yay, first day of a new week. And we will be reading 2 Samuel chapter 12 today. Yesterday we saw um, mm, how David did some things that were not pleasing to God. Mm -mm -mm. Adultery with one of his uh, soldiers' wives, Uriah's wife Bathsheba. She got pregnant and then David tried to set her husband up to make it look like it was his. When that didn't work, he sent the man out to meet his death on the battlefield. And then when he died, he sent and took his wife. Mm. So let's see what happens next. Chapter 12. And the Lord sent, sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he had brought up and which he had bought and nourished up. And it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. <laughs> Let's pause here a minute. Okay. This man, the prophet Nathan, has come to David and given him. Now, Nathan was sent by God. Okay. He's a prophet. Giving him a scenario, it's not real, but he's giving him a scenario to have his mind thinking. A rich man and a poor man. The rich man has a visitor one night, and instead of taking his own livestock to kill, to feast for the visitor, he goes and he takes the only thing that the poor man had and used that, killed it for his feast. David is upset. When Nathan asked him, what do you think should be done to that man? David is so angry. That man should surely die. Let's see if he changes his mind now. Verse 6. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Mm. You want to tell me that there is no recompense with God okay this is David whom he loves okay he says whom the Lord loves he chastens David thought I don't know how he could think he got away with what he did but he, I guess he did and his righteous indignation is so at work when he's hearing the story about the man and taking the other man's lamb and all that stuff. oh vengeance on that man how dare he does that he should die and Give fourfold back to the man till Nathan broke it to him. That's you. That's you, David. You took a man's wife and then had the man slain by the enemies of Israel. Okay, and here what else got added? 
the sword shall never depart from thine house. And we're going to be reading later on. And we, let me tell you something. God's word does not fall flat to the ground and splatter. Oh, it comes to pass. Every letter that makes up every word will come to pass. Verse 11. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. And he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the son. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. How be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. Whew. Okay, I'm going to say this. Hmm. The Bible says to him who knows to do wrong, or sorry, who knows to do right and does it not, to him it is sin. Did David know he was doing wrong? I think he has. They told him, that is Uriah's wife. That alone should have just had him turn around and go back into his house and go about his business. But he didn't do that. He took it further and further and further and further. And you know what? God recompensed to him exactly his due because what he did was so offensive in God's sight. God said, you give occasion for the enemies, the Philistines. That means the word got around. You think people are stupid? <laughs> people are not foolish. You think somebody didn't talk when they had Bathsheba brought into the palace? And then who did she send to tell him that she was pregnant? And then he went to fetch her. And then he concocted up that, 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 that uh, situation for her husband to be killed. You think people aren't seeing and talking? But in his mind, if nobody confronts him with it, he's fine. Isn't that just like us? We think our sin is okay because nobody could tell me anything. I'm doing what I want until God deals with us. This is what's happening with him here. Verse 16. So the child that she was pregnant with, I guess she had the child and the child got sick. Because God said, you know what? That testimony to your wrongdoing is not going to live. Oh my gosh. Verse 16. David therefore besought God for the child and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, but he would not. Neither did he eat bread with him, with them, sorry. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself and changed his apparel and came into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. So David was mourning for this child. He tried to intercede before God for this child, but God had already told him the child's going to die. God did not listen. The child died. He was fasting, he was praying, he was trying to see if he could manipulate God. I would say this, we do that sometimes. 
Oh God, I would do this. Oh God, I would do that. Oh God, I would never. And there we go on and on and on and on. And God has already spoken. God said, you know what? It ain't going to happen. And this is exactly what took place with David. It's not going to happen. You could do what you will. You could walk on air. It's not going to happen. So the child died. And when he heard that, got himself up, cleaned up, went inside his house, ate. There was nothing more he could do. Okay, verse 21. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And David comforted Bathsheba his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her, and she bare a son. And he called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. And he sent by the hand of Nathan the prophet, and he called his name Jedidiah, because of the Lord. <laughs> oh my God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God, the God, my God, your God is an awesome God. He is firm, he is fair, he's loving. So David had another son by Bathsheba. Called his name Solomon, I think the prophet named him Jedidiah. Let's see what takes place next. Verse 26. And Joab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon and took the royal city. And Joab sent messengers to David and said, I have fought against Rabbah and have taken the city of waters. Now therefore gather the rest of the people together and encamp against the city and take it. Lest I take the city and it be called after my name. And David gathered all the people together and went to Rabbah and fought against it and took it. And he took their king's crown from off his head, the weight whereof was a talent of gold with the precious stones. And it was set on David's head, and he brought forth the spoil of the city in great abundance. And he brought forth the people that were therein, and put them under swords, and under harrows of iron, and under axes of iron, and made them pass through the brick kiln. And thus did he unto all the cities of the children of Ammon, so David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. So after that episode, child died, child born, went back to war, conquered the Ammonites, took their spoils, life goes on. I'm going to say this, God does not sanction sin. If God said, don't, and we do, you know there is a consequence to pay for it. Whether it's shortcoming, long coming, it's forthcoming. Unless, and sometimes repentance is going to give us forgiveness from that sin. But it does not always wash away the consequences of it. Sometimes we live with it for all our lives. You see that with David. He could have, he did all he could, thinking he could. I call it manipulating God. <laughs> he can do it. God's mind was made up. That child died, but God allowed him to have another son by Bathsheba. And he went on about his life. But God already told him, the sword shall not depart from your house. What else did he tell him? And there's going to be evil risen up from within his house. And how he took a man's wife in secret, other someone else is going to take his wives in the open. That's the end of our reading of 2 Samuel chapter 12. We are going to be going on with the rest of what's going to take place with David, King David, that we all love so much. <laughs> so until then. Thank you for viewing. Thank you for the comments. I got a comment uh, recently. Thank you for listening. And again, get your Bible out. Follow with me. Go back in and read. Whatever it is you want to ask or query or comment on, that's fine. But thanks again. And until our next reading, please remember...
to keep listening because that's how we obtain our faith.